Hey there folks, Santee at the Arizona Ghost Riders here. The campaign hat, the Montana Peak Lemon Squeezer. Let's check them out. When I started out doing cowboy action shooting, I had one hat. After a move to Arizona and getting into reenacting, I gained another hat. 21 years later, and I now have, much to Mrs. Santee's dismay, well, 15. <coughs> These hats represent a lot of different Old West styles and characters. Looking at photos from the period, you can see a variety that really gives you that creative freedom to experiment with shapes and styles. When John B. Stetson made the iconic Boss of the Plains back in 1865, it was an open crown, meaning that there was no specialty crease. You could leave it as is or shape it. The flat brim can be drastically bent to get out of the way of your roping arm, or gently curved to give you some style. It's easy for us to get absorbed into the look and color and all that, but remember that on the frontier the hat was more function than fashion. The dance and creases could be accidental, or from repeated use, or because it worked well in the region's weather. Walking the street on an Old West movie set has taught me how to think functionally when it comes to hats. Yes, I bought a straw for the summer, and alternate with a lighter felt I borrowed from the wardrobe department. Well, a guy with 15 hats shouldn't be borrowing a hat, and I don't like odd numbers. Enter Marsh Custom Hats. Mike Marsh showed up at Old Tucson a few months ago and showed off some of his custom work. His teacher is the famous Tom Hurt, who built many hats for the movie Tombstone and other westerns. Mike is extremely talented and informative, and I'll put a link for him in the description field below. I've been wanting a campaign hat for a while after seeing a few worn by other actors in these past four movies. Mike said he could make one in the lighter dress weight for me in beaver felt. I decided to bite and make the investment for the job. I chose the color natural because I've never had a hat in a tan gray color before and it looked nifty. As you've seen, I've got hats in all colors. Well, not pink. Huh? Pink. According to Mike, black and natural seemed to be the most common colors during the Old West period. However, there was a plethora of color choices. Well, you told me I have a plethora. And I just would like to know if you know what a plethora is. A plethora is an abundance, profusion, or large amount of something. The campaign hat has four dents in the crown, and is also known as the Montana Crease and the Lemon Squeezer. When life gives you lemons, just make lemonade. It dates back to the 1840s, when soldiers out west started wearing the civilian-style hats to replace their less practical kepis. Those pinched dents provide a good wind resistance, and also deflect rainwater better than a center-creased hat. Mexican sombreros frequently have these four dents as well. The campaign style ended up being popular in the Spanish-American War and happens to be the hat of choice for Smokey Bear. Only you. In all seriousness, it's still in commission today and it's just a classic looking head cover. I'll be honest, this hat is out of my comfort zone, but I'm really liking it, which tells me we should all try different styles now and again. It also doesn't hurt to have different Old West impressions in your back pocket, or, uh, on your head. Well, folks, that's it for another episode. Thanks for watching. And as always, please like, share, and subscribe, and we'll see you on down the trail.